Good evening everyone welcome to another video in the series of machine learning and in this video finally we are going to build our first machine learning model and we are going to predict the grade of student based on previous some aspects or previous grades of the student this we are going to do by using OLS which is called ordinary least square so i would like to give some uh, introduction to OLS and uh, multiple linear regression and after that we are good to talk about uh, practical machine learning and you will see how easy is it to call the model and just fit on the data so let us first talk a bit about OLS and then we will do the practical machine learning okay so do you remember how in the previous video I talked about loss function and I told that loss functions are used to measure the goodness of line and there are so many loss functions available such as one I talked about which was mean squared error and which has the formula which is something like this what it do it just basically calculates the vertical distance between true value and pre predicted value we do the square of it and we find the average for all the instances as you can see formula over here but uh, loss function used in OLS which is ordinary least square is a bit different just take out this 1 divided by 2 m part and you will get your OLS loss function it is called uh, sum of squared error it makes sense so if I go to Google and the formula is something like this and it is called residual sum of squares or sum of squared error it's basically a true value minus predicted value do the square and do same for all other uh, values in your data set or rows in your data set and find out the uh, sum of all the losses and that is what you will get residual sum of square and the main goal of OLS is to minimize this so uh, if you want a better explanation just pause the video and try to understand this diagram over here also I got this website pretty cool uh, actually uh, I'll just link this in down description you can actually move the points and see the values of changing beta 1 and beta 0 and that is done by using OLS uh, so now we'll see how OLS is able to find out the optimal values of beta 1 and beta 0 or theta 1 theta 0 like that is just a convention but internal concepts will just remain the same so uh, I found this website, uh, not website, uh, PDF. I leave this PDF also in down description. Now we have already talked about this loss function formula for which is OLS ordinary least square. And the main goal of OLS is to minimize this particular loss function. Obviously it makes sense. We need to reduce the loss so that we can get the perfect values. So for that we basically uh, calculate the partial derivative with respect to all the variables in your equation but in this case there are sorry coefficients for all the coefficients but in this case is beta 0 and beta 1 or you can call theta 0 theta 1. So you have to calculate the derivative with respect to these both coefficients of this loss and after the calculation you will get uh, this for beta 0 and this for beta 1 and after some more calculations so after some calculations you get the formula something like this so you can call this as slope or x1 coefficient so that is the formula or you can also uh, interpret it as this so you do the sum of uh, just just watch it so x bar meaning mean y bar meaning mean mean of y yi meaning particular value of uh, y at i instance or number and similarly xi and v uh, over here so once you calculate the value of beta 1 it will be very easy for you to calculate the beta 0 because you know y equals to beta 1 times x plus beta 0 so you can place the value of x which is mean which is going to be mean of x y which is going to mean of y and beta 1 we have already calculated just place in this equation you will get beta 0 so that was basically uh, how the beta 1 beta 0 values are calculated using OLS and you see that it is very easy so it will be very quick to fit our model so now let's give uh, some introduction to multiple linear regression all right so until now we have uh, talked all about simple linear regression we are only one independent variable and one dependent variable let's see uh, example over here which is uh, apple is dependent on price meaning if you change the price the apple apple kilogram or quantity of apple will also increase or decrease depending on price so there was only one independent and one dependent variable and the formula was something like this which was y equals to theta 1 times x plus theta 0 and it can be interpreted as apple equals to theta 1 times price of that apple plus theta 0 but if we talk about multiple linear regression there is not only one independent variable there are more than one independent variable as i was talking in the starting of the video uh, grade of student 
So final grade of student is dependent on so many other aspects. So let's say grade two, grade one, meaning previous two year grade and uh, um, uh, number of times the student fail or number of absences or number of free time or number of study time. So there are so many aspects based on that the final grade can be evaluated. So that was called that is called multiple linear regression when we have multiple independent variables which help to pre predict the dependent variable if we see for a mathematical formula it will look something like this which is y plus 2 beta 0 plus beta 1 times x1 plus beta 2 times x2 up till beta i where i is the length of your independent variables you can interpret it as let's say uh, beta 1 can be the coefficient for failure beta 2 can be coefficient for grade 1 beta uh, 3 can be for grade 2 and basically it tells you how much importance should be given to particular uh, variable or column you see if beta 1 is greater meaning one unit change in failure keeping all other constant all other independent variable constant will have greater impact on grade 3 so failure will have more relationship with grade 3 so that was basically multiple linear regressions so now once you know about all of this you are feeling comfortable in this we will going to build our first deep machine learning model so let's do that. All right, so now we are going to practically do the linear regression by using scikit library. But you know that machine learning is all about data and the biggest thing is to get the data in the right order, in the right form. But before that, just get the data from anywhere you want. So there are just, in my knowledge, there are two websites. One is Kaggle and the other is UCI. On Kaggle, you can get a lot of data actually. And on UCI, it contains, it also has a lot of data, but for all the practices, practice purposes, you can just click classify or filter out the data depending on classification and regression clustering or categorical numerical another thing you can try is uh, searching on internet google or whatever search engine you use or if you're still not getting you can ask someone on reddit or you can ask on facebook groups like there are a lot of ways for getting the data if you if you are thinking there is something new in your data it is not available it haven't done before so you have to do you have to make your data on your own so since we are going to predict the student grade and i am pretty sure that it will be available so i'll just search for student and i'll hit search and i'll get results something like this so i'll just click on the first link and this is the data we are going to work with now if you get the data set first step would be to study about the data set so so this is the attribute information or in short this is the information about the every column which column is doing what so for example the family size or the study time or failures or uh, paid uh, you can just read about it and one we are interested in for prediction of final grade which is g3 or this is going to be our dependent and uh, the main goal of our is to find out our useful independent variables so we'll see how to find how to do that but before let's just go to data folder to download the data you can click on student.zip and let's open show in folder okay so i'll just copy it in desktop and i'll just extract it on the desktop only all right so this is the data set let's just open with office okay so you see this one so uh, the attribute information over here this one you can use it to find out which column should be good for you for the prediction of final grade all right so now we got the data set now we'll uh, just open our favorite id or text editor to write our python script or machine learning model so i'll use spider if you have installed anaconda based on part zero so you'll uh, have spider also because spider comes pre-installed with anaconda you can open the spider and the first thing you need to do is to change the directory so you can click on this folder and now wherever you have looked at just locate it inside students let's choose the directory you go to file right click and create a new blank python script so let's just name this student.py that's all once you click a uh, new file will open in your spider or it will be situated over here so our first step is completed which is getting the data set now we'll import this data set now for importing there is a library called pandas so pandas comes i guess pre-installed in anaconda if not you can just say pip install pandas in your terminal and we'll say df equals to pd dot read csv now csv is for 
comma separated values so let's just name the file name which is student dot mat sorry student mat dot csv which is located over here so let's run both of these lines by selecting and hitting f9 and you come to variable explorer if you double click on df you'll see that uh data set looks nothing like this because the reason is csv is comma separated but this file is semicolon separated so you can say sep equals you can pass in this semicolon once you run this you'll get data set something like this now there is a function called df dot correlation which shows you correlation between different columns and visualizing those correlations we can import c bond and we'll also need matplotlib to increase the size of figure so let's select both of these and run and now if i say df dot correlation and i run it in the right side uh, and in the bottom you'll see something like this so we'll just visualize it by using sns so we'll use heat map just paste it and for changing the size of graph we can say plt dot figure and just give the figure size and we'll also enable annotation just to show the real values not the color so you'll just see what do i mean by that let's select both of these lines and run so module is not callable oh matplotlib.pyplot so you just have to say this let's run this once again so inside the plots you'll get uh graph something like this or plot something like this let's just round the values to only one decimal place all right there you go so we are interested in the last column which is g3 and you see uh this is the correlation with g3 correlation with age g3 correlation with uh, mother education and so on now you see grade one okay so first the higher the positive value up till one the better it is negative value meaning it has negative correlation and the value should not be close to zero which shows that there is no correlation between the variables so based on this i found out that g1 and g2 help uh, in the prediction of grade three or if you are saying to choose one more so i would choose failure because failure has some correlation with g3 it is negative but it has correlation so we'll uh, say df which is going to be our new df and you can pass the list or name of all the columns you want obviously we want failures and then as said g1 g2 and obviously g3 so this is going to be our new data frame or df now one thing to note that uh, whatever column you choose as independent column which is g1 g2 and g3 they should not have any correlation with each of them meaning uh, g1 should not be dependent on g2 or such that like try to understand so if i run this and i open df once again you'll get a uh, filter out data frame you see that all the values are integer we do not need to do uh, label encoding we'll learn about label encoding when i feel like it is required but for now since it's not uh, we have all the integer values now we'll uh, convert this to x and y which is feature vector and output output vector or you can say that feature input or output variables now for getting it you can say that df dot index location and you can say take all the rows and columns we want is from 0 up till g2 right so it is 0 1 2 so you can say 0 up to 3 which is which means that it is going to take 0 1 and 2 now we'll convert it to numpy array by saying dot values similarly we are going to do the same for y also and y is going to be our output variable which is g3 so we can say take all the rows and take last column you can say minus 1 and we'll come convert it to array Let's Let's select both of these lines and run you'll get uh, x something like this which is going to be our input and y something like this which is going to be our output now it is very easy to create a model you just have to use sklearn library for that so you can say sklearn dot linear model import linear regression that's all now we'll just instantiate this linear regression we'll say something like this now select both of the lines that's all boom you have your linear regression model now you just need to fit onto this data which is x and y so you just have to say regression dot fit on which data x and y so x is going to be our input and y is going to be our out so if i select this line and run this you see that we got no error and our model has been fit now there is a way to check the accuracy of mo your model how good is it there is a function called score so you can say regression dot score on x and y let's run this to see the accuracy so it's 82 percent but the problem with this strategy uh, let's understand with an example let's say in a classroom teacher taught uh, students two questions and in the exam exactly those same questions came so what do you think obviously all the teacher all the students will top that exam and the same thing is happening over here we are saying that 
learn from x and y and then we are saying score on x and y obviously we need some way to train on some other data and score on some other data which is unseen to this regression so for that purpose there is a function called train test and split inside against scalar this is called model selection and you can import train test and split and if i say train run like this and i click on this test and i hit control and i in the right side you'll get documentation of train test and split so you can just read out what input does it take what output does it give and if you see the examples you can see that it returns x train y x train x test and y train and y test let's copy this actually and paste in over here because i can't write this long thing and input what input does it? obviously x and y and then you can give it test size so you can say test size to be 0.1 meaning 10 percent of data will be for testing and another 90 percent of data will be for training let's select both of these lines and hit f9 to run and in the variable explorer you will got you will get four new variables which is x train y train x test y test let's have a look on x train and y train so you see that previously we had 395 values and out of 395 355 are for training and 40 are for part or testing part so you see that it looks something like this exactly same just we split out plus you'll see that the values will also get shuffled which is good for training our model so now we, what we'll do we'll instead of fitting on x and y we'll fit on x train and y train and we'll test on x test and y test it's that simple okay let's run this once again so accuracy is improved actually 84 percent let's run this once again all of this so accuracy is 93 percent so now accuracy is 73 percent so why is that happening obviously um let's again understand with an example let's say in a class teacher taught about differentiation and integration and calculation but in the test what came is addition and subtraction so this same thing is happening over here where it got 93 percent accuracy or on the other hand try to think that teacher taught addition and subtraction but in exam what came integration and calculus and the accuracy is 73 percent so obviously uh but you see that it is ranging from 70 to 90 percent so we can see that the accuracy is around 85 80 to 85 percent which is pretty good now let's make the prediction from our model so let's say y prediction so it is going to return y prediction we can say model dot not model regression dot predict the name of your model regression dot predict and you can pass in this x test we can we want to test on make the predictions on y prediction let's run this so if i open y prediction uh, these are going to be the predicted value and y test will go, will be going to be the true value so you see uh, when it was 11 the prediction is 9.9 which is around 10 which is about quite good actually let's try something else so it was 11 and the prediction is 11.7 so it is 16 and actually it is basically uh, pretty good for this amount of data 395 uh, variables 395 length of data okay so now another thing you can try doing is plt dot plot not plot actually scatter now what do scatter do it generally scatters your data onto a 2d plane so we can say scatter y test and y prediction if you just do it and hit f9 and in the plots tab you'll get a result something like this so you see that uh, y prediction with respect to y test is pretty a straight line so you can see you can say that model is working pretty fine all right so now i'll tell you how you can write your own input and how you can make the prediction from the model which is reg so you can create an numpy array and you can pass in the list of let's come in over here so it has three features you need to give three features which is failure grade one and grade two let's say the failure is zero and grade so you'll see that our output is 19.7 meaning if student has failure zero times previous two grades has 19 then its new grade will be 19.7 which is close to 20 so obviously it makes sense so you will get a feeling that our model is working pretty good so that is basically all about linear regression and how you collect the data how you collect the useful information from the data and how you fit on the model and what does x train y train x test y test mean so that is basically all about this and i'll stop the video right over here if you have any queries you may just ask them in down comment section and that's it